A ver, grabando. So, we came here to Costa Coffee to test our new project, which is Barista 2.0. There you go. to the workbench. Welcome ROS developers to this new video series that we will call ROS Projects, where we are going to create robotics projects that use ROS and there you will learn loads of stuff related to ROS, always with real robots for doing real tasks. First of all, I would like to thank Costa Coffee for letting us to play around in their fantastic coffee shop. So give them love and, and if you go there, ask for a chai latte. It's the best there is. So in this Ross project, you will learn navigation, you will learn how to work with Arduino and ROS, you will learn how to set up a computer to work in real robotics uh, projects, and also you will learn how to create a very simple web app that communicates with ROS in a way that you can control the robot easily through a mobile phone, tablet or PC. We won't go much into details in this ROS project series. We, we are only going to give you the basic building blocks and the practical advice so that you can build your own solutions. So you can replicate what we show you here. If you want to learn more details and learn in-depth topics about, for example, navigation or AI or building a, a robot, You'll find in Robotic Night Academy loads of courses about those topics. So please check it out. I leave in the video description. So first step, what do we want to do? So what we want to do here is create a robot that takes orders in a restaurant in a way that the, the people in charge of the restaurant just have to prepare the food and drinks and they place it on the robot and the robot takes the orders to the corresponding table and come back. That's basically the main idea. So the first thing is, has anyone done something similar? That's, that's very important because normally when you do a robotics project, you make a lot of mistakes, especially if you haven't done something similar before. So if, if you see an example of someone that has done that before and has made the mistakes for you so that you don't have to make them again and reinvent the wheel, it, it, it gives you a head start there. So fortunate enough, there's already a company that has done it. It's called Bear Robotics and I leave their website in the video description because they made very good robots for that. And having a look at the web page and their commercials and, and data sheets and so on, we can get a very good idea of how to get started with this, what will be the problems and things that we will need. So my personal recommendation is always that you want to do a robotics project, have a look on what other people have made because probably you'll get very good inspiration and examples on how to start. So we're going to make a very simple list 
of what are the basic elements that we need to create in order to, to build this robot. So the first thing is we need a physical robot that it can be a, is able to move stuff around in, in the orders of some various drinks and dishes and so on. So around two kilograms of payload more or less and move it around a restaurant. So it can't be very big but it can't be very, very small that it can't take those orders and it has to be comfortable enough so that the people that work with it um, can place the orders comfortably. We also need a system that detects when the orders are placed on top, but more importantly, when the orders are taken by the customers. Then we also need some kind of system that allows to navigate around a complex environment so generate maps and navigate and generate waypoints so that we know each table where it is and can go to that table in particular. Then we also need some kind of system that allows uh, people that are not technical, that are not roboticists to control the robot. So the best way would be a web app of some kind that you can access with your mobile phone uh, and that you can move the robot around if you need to move it, um, know if the load has been taken, calibrate it, so tell the robot that you have placed something on top, and also tell him to go to table one or table two, or maybe while it's moving to table one, to you, you think that, oh, maybe I have to move it to table two, so change it or cancel if something goes wrong. And finally, we need some kind of feedback system universal feedback that tells the, the customers basically when they have to pick the, the order but also the people that work with the robot know when the calibration has been successfully done, when it understood that it has to go to a table or when it's returning or when it has no battery, this kind of stuff. And also bear in mind that that feedback has to be some kind of universal feedback because we don't know the customers where are they from, which language they speak, and so on. So now that we have the basic requirements, we need to be more concrete. So for that, now you'll see that I have the solution ready, but this takes a lot of time because you have to investigate and see which solutions have the potential to be uh, good solutions and not make you spend a lot of time that then it's, it's not worth it or it won't work or it will be unstable, this kind of stuff. So this is one of the elements that I give more work, uh, but lucky for you, I've done the work for you. So there you go. Here are the list of things that we will need to develop to make our robot. Bear in mind that these solutions are just my opinion. So probably you'll find solutions different, or maybe for your use case, some solutions that I give won't be uh, good for you. Maybe you'll have to tweak them. But the, the basic idea, I think it's feasible for anyone. So the first thing is the physical robot. So this depends a lot on your budget. So if you have a low budget, um, you won't be able to, to get this solution just because this solution is around 2,000 euros, more or less. But in robotics terms, 2,000 euros is, is not a lot of money. So this depends on what. Basically, uh, my recommendation would be if you can spend the money, spend it in the hardware because working with a robot that doesn't work or it's not reliable enough, the hardware, it's a nightmare. So if you can afford it, pay it. So in our case, I decided for a TurtleBot 2 from Ross Components. I leave their link in the video description. They sell loads of things um, related to robotics and Ross. So it's really well integrated with ROS and it's around all the setup, it's around 2000 euros for the robot, the nuke and also the laser. And this comes to the next topic, which is the mapping solution. So I, I decided to use the ROS navigation stack and the navigation with laser, just because it's very reliable. It's something that it has been worked a lot, so it, it's relatively easy to make it work. And I decided to use a Hokuyo 
uh, laser, which are relatively non-expensive lasers and it has a very good ROS integration. Then for detecting the orders, this was one of the tricky parts. I decided to use a load sensor, which you can find in Amazon. I'll leave all the links of the hardware in the video description. Um, but basically it is a piece of metal that has some sensors that detect when it deforms. And it has a payload of around five kilograms, so it's more than enough to take orders and so on and basically detects the force applied on top. So it's perfect. And that sensor I thought of connected to an Arduino because it's very inexpensive and it has ROS integration, which is really important for me because I need the readings of the weight to be published in ROS. So then I can use all my ROS stack to process that information. So to control the robots, through a mobile phone or something that anyone can control, I decided to create a web app using Bootstrap, Roslib, and ROSW. Those three systems allow me to, one, with Bootstrap, I can do a very uh, good looking page that gives me the functionality that I need, which is basically some buttons to press to each of the tables, a button for calibrating the weight sensor, and one to reset that calibration sensor and also some readings to uh, monitor the battery and also some kind of joystick of some kind that allows me to move the robot around if, if, the, um, if I need to move it. Then the ROSLib.js basically allows me to connect to ROS systems through the web. And finally, the ROSW allows me to generate the server inside the robot so that it generates, gives me access to that web page that I use to control everything. And finally, to give the feedback, as I mentioned earlier, it has to be a feedback that is universal. So, so someone that speaks Chinese or English or French, or Spanish or any language can understand the context and know what the robot means. So I decided to use uh, Star Wars droid speaking way of doing it. One, because I really love Star Wars and two, because it's a very universal way of communicating. Because if, for example, the robot comes with your order and stops and then says something, by the context you understand that you have to pick your order up. And not only that, but when you pick it up, then it says thank you in droid speak. It says some, some different beeps, always the same, same different beeps. So by the context, you know that the robot means, hey, you picked up your order, so now I can go back to my base. And the same thing with the, the, the users of the ro robot. So the people in the restaurant, when you calibrate it, it will say something like calibrate it in droid speak. And always that you calibrate, it will say exactly the same. So you know when you calibrate and you hear that sound, that it's calibrated. And that's the end of the first episode. So in the next episode, what we will do is explain the two main systems that we need to create uh, to make this work. Those two systems that we can't find like in navigation, there's a load of stuff already done. So you, we will just have to download and configure for our own robot. But in this case, the load sensor, it's not done. So we need to create uh, the program for Arduino, we have to connect it to ROS and do all the programs that basically ROSify that load sensor and gives us the information of have I placed an object? Has the customer retrieved that object? And I can return this kind of stuff. And two, it's the web app. So we have to create a web app that um, adapts to our needs, that uh, sends table waypoints or table indications to, to the robot, cancel navigation controls, move it through a joystick. Until then, keep building.